Rebel for Jesus. 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 Good morning, Vietnam! Okay, so I'm going to start this video doing something. But I'm going to tell you about my my rapture dream. And, um, because it's, I wouldn't describe it as a rapture dream because, um, you know, people weren't getting sucked up into the heavens. But it does have a lot of similarities um, with what some people are doing in their rapture dreams, and mine is um, mine involved seeing what I concluded afterwards must have been God. Now it took me a while to con con conclude that because I thought, you know, we're not supposed to be able to see God, so. But I kept thinking, who was that in that dream? It's like, and this was before I thought that um, the name of God was Jesus, and all that mix up with, you know, Yeshua who died on the cross. He was the Christ. If you you could even say, Jesus is Christ with an apostrophe if the name of God is Jesus and that's what I now believe and it's all a bit complicated to explain but there we go anyway so so in this dream I was having and this was a day before I had booked a ticket very short notice to fly to America and so I was having this dream um, before I woke up it's like that day to go and what it was, was I was in a, let's say, like a, an office where there was sort of a bank, like a round sort of bank of you know, people on phones. I'd say there was just several people there, sort of seeming like busy office. And in the middle was this man with very long, brown, beautiful, luscious hair, you know. Uh, no beard, I seem to remember no beard just long curly hair and he was then you know he, he sort of knows I was there and all this time there was uh, music there was a, a wonderful music in the dream and um, he came over to me and he was sort of still on the phone I think and yeah at that point he was he was I think that came first he was getting through to someone who was like a, a woman and then I saw a glimpse of her walking in the street so he was like on the phone to her saying let's let's go for it now and she commented something like let's get this party started it seemed so quite funny and it was going with the music in a sense that was in the dream so it was all sort of flowing and everything and then he just sort of turned to me and went I love you I love you I love you and so that day then I got to the airport and stuff and I'd messed up my visa and they wouldn't let me on the plane and um, there was only one other flight I could get onto so I sorted out the visa thing I had to wait 12 hours in the airport and with a lucky chance of getting on this plane and as a standby um, and if I didn't get on that that would be it I would have wasted all my money car hire plane back anyway so I had this dream in my head and thinking, you know, it'll be all right in the last moment it will get sorted. And it did, and I got on the plane. So that, if you like, was my dream of what I consider to be Father God and what it has to do with rapture. I, you know, I don't know because I have a different take on the rapture. You know, I'm, I'm saying rapture is happening. Some people have already had it some people are yet to have it it's an individual thing an individual feeling so I feel like I am saved I don't fear death the only thing I fear is you know is going the wrong way you know if that should happen that I that would be the last thing that I want to happen take the wrong path sort of thing so I <clears throat> when I'm not sure if what I'm doing is correct you know I check in with God 
and you know I will always get an answer if this feels all right or not or if it's one of those things there's nothing you can do so leave it to God you know it's great it's fantastic so um, so with that said this video is going to be uh, about a few things um, because there's crystal love for Jesus channel and she's um, doing a lot you know posting a lot of other people's rapture videos and I kind of did uh, I did sort of ask her you know maybe she could share one of mine and and I said I showed her a short video that I said this is probably the best thing I have to share so and I I sort of watched it earlier and I I've been very succinct with it and so I'm going to sort of explain it a little bit more. Look at this. So this is the the image that I say encompasses all of reality. Now it's actually just one one subsection of all of reality but it is um, you know there'd be lots of these basically you could look at this picture and go well this is a complete being like God is like we as children of God are but you'd only be complete like God is complete because the the two halves of the soul, the male and the female, are one together. Whereas we're still so sort of, we are like that too, but not while we have these lives um, given to us, like temporary lives to to have experiences within God's universe. So we too have little universes, but you know we're not in them at the moment we're still we're still at play school we're still in our mummy and daddy's universe playing in their universe with their guidance in order to learn because one day uh, we're gonna be have our hands full with our own universe and our own little children who will be little universes so, if you talk about the physical universe, so if I point that way now, it'll go that way. Our physical universe, number three there, that is your physical universe. So those are the realms. Three, six, and nine are the three-dimensional realms. You've got height, width, and depth, right? So number three, that is your physical realm. Number six is the spiritual realm. And number nine is the dominant emotional realm. So emotional is dominant. Um, you can imagine that whatever wonderful experiences you can have here in the physical, in the emotional, they're going to be thousandfold, millionfold. You know, that's where it's all happening. We can't be let loose there. We wouldn't be capable, but. God wouldn't want to let us loose there without learning first because potentially we could damage ourselves. Who knows? But who wants to do something before they're prepared and ready? Ha! <laughs> like me and my videos. Okay, so, so the other numbers there so basically we've got here all the numbers in the universe right one to nine zero isn't a number zero could be represented with a dash or an underscore or a blank it's not a number you can really do any maths with is it you know like naught plus naught is naught naught times naught is naught naught divided by naught is naught <laughs> it's, it's dead basically right so we're we're talking about all the numbers there are 1 to 9 that's what we use we use a base of 10 there's 9 yeah and you've got 0 
is a one and then a blank is is representing something but zero could almost be like the anti number okay so any number except zero any number except zero you can you can double you can do maths with right now if you get to a two figure number you can reduce that to one figure okay so if we start with one and we double it we get two we double it we get four we double it we get eight we double that we get sixteen but reducing it to one number one plus six we get seven seven plus seven is fourteen one plus four is five so we get five is the next number and we could have done sixteen doubled thirty two three plus two is still five so whichever way you do it you get five then 5 plus 5 is 10, 1 plus 0 is 1, so back to 1. And on and on it goes, so even if we did the 16, 32, 64, 6 plus 4 is 10, that's 1 plus 0 is 1. 128 then should be 2, shouldn't it? 1 plus, not, 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 2 is 11, 1 plus 1 is 2. So you get this infinite loop, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. So that's all the numbers except 3, 6 and 9 in an infinite loop. And they're drawn on this circle. You've got the two bits sticking out there. Looks like the infinite loop. Right, so then, so 3 is the physical dimension. So where you are during the day, everything. Yeah, that's the three realms. But the the one, two, four, eight, seven, five, that is a con that is the constant. And the the two constants time and truth. So time is always ticking away. So the people who say, Oh, there's no time. There is time. Clearly there's time. Because there's always a past and there's always a future and there's always a now and the now is never the same the now is always moving the past is always increasing and the and you're heading into the future you're heading into the unknown so time is there you can't deny time and truth there is a truth there is one truth it will be the truth always so it's a constant now, <clears throat> if we double three, quite handy. Three plus three, right? Six times two, twelve. So you'd reduce that to one. So that would be um, three times two. So we thought so it's six. So we've had. 3, 6, 3, 6 times 2, 3, 6, now we've got 3 again, yeah, 12, yeah, 3, times 2, uh, 15, so that's 6, uh, 3 again, I'm sure they go out of loop at some point, 3 again, 12, no, 6, so this is going 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6. 6 times 2 equals, so we got 6, 3 times 2 equals 6 times 2 equals 3 times 2 equals 6 times 2 equals, well we're on to the same numbers now aren't we? But um, actually they do some sort of 3, 6, 3, 6, and that's a bit like um, sleeping and awaking isn't it? There. <coughs> <laughs> You wait and you sleep, you wait and you sleep. And some philosophers have pondered when I dream I am a butterfly. Or is that when I'm awake? It's quite mad, isn't it? I mean, you could, but the thing is, it's not constant, is it? Right. When I dream, all sorts of things happen. But actually, I'm always me. I've always got the same body. You know, you do have, but if you've never thought about that, you might want to look, think about it. You have got a body when you sleep. That is your spiritual body. Isn't it? 
<clears throat> so the number nine the number nine is the magic one nine is the magic number uh, ask a math mathematician they love the number nine and so when you double nine you get nine 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 you always get a nine 18, 1 plus 8, 9. 36, 9. 72, 9. 1 for 4, 9. 2, 8, 8, 1, 6, 7 plus 2, 9. 5, 7, 6, 7 plus 6, 13. That's 4 plus 5, 9. So there you go. You always get a 9. See what I mean? See what I mean? That is everything in the universe. And what with the nine being up there, you see? So you have challenges to deal with in life. You're always going to be the next challenge. And that's how we grow, learn, isn't it? Right? Oh yeah, I was going to say about the doubling. Think about how things grow, you know, cells double, they multiply, don't they? That's how cells grow, they double and they double again. So that's what we're doing with the numbers. And you can take these numbers and you can work stuff out in the physical universe, you know, they're true, numbers are true. You've got two things here and you've got two things here, and then you can put them together and count them, that's four, you know, you can, you can see that it's true. So, what I was saying before, so with the, 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 you've got challenges in life, and they always come to the number nine point first, you see. You always get a chance to deal with them at the number nine point, but most of us, once we reach adulthood, are no longer in touch with our number nine. We're no longer in touch with our true self. We think our dreams are nonsense. We're only concerned with the physical dimension. Why does that partly happen? Because in our younger years as children, <clears throat> we have some scary dreams, and then we, you know, we're told it's all right. It's just a dream. It's just a dream. It's not real. You know, you're back in the real world now. Forget about it. All right. It's the wrong thing to do. It disconnects you. That makes the child feel okay. Phew. That that feeling I got in that dream then wasn't real. I don't have to worry about that. Whereas in reality, you know, yeah, you do. If you're having dreams like that, trying to prompt you to feel a feeling, you should, you should, you should face it, because it's not that bad. You know, we fear this feeling that we had when we were a child or something. And actually, when you, as an adult, and like for me, with a, a belief system where God is good and loving. And wouldn't be putting us in this situation if it was going to be so terrible. You know, you're actually fine. You can, you can deal with these things quite simply, um, and quite quickly as well. When you, when you're there, when the opportunity comes, you can do it. And all the things that happen, say in your dreams or in your in the physical dimension are kind of creating opportunities for you to deal with these things so you know you might not l like what's happening because it's not necessarily going your way um, but things are God God is always sort of bringing us towards the way we should be going even when we struggle and run away God is working on bringing us back in a way that God knows is best for us because God knows us better than anyone. God's been with us since the beginning. And we're only just getting into a sort of position where we can begin to understand what we are. And yet God has known us for all the time that we've existed. And that's a long time, a lot longer than most people think. 
Okay then, uh, what are we going to do next? Have I finished with that? I guess I have. I just want to say thank if Crystal, if you are watching. Uh, brilliant idea with the t-shirts. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Great. I really enjoyed wearing. Let's have a look. Um, wearing the t-shirt. There was this one and this one. This was my rant. I'm going to Maybe rant. so many people are dying in this country Great because their immune systems are already... Quite right. And this one. There. Those interested in eugenics... Love the t-shirt. Thank you, Crystal. Great idea. I loved wearing it out. It was uh, a real cool thing. Right. Now, completely change direction and subject, but this is what I'm interested in, and um, shouldn't get closer. Get closer. That still works. That still works. Well, Galpers out, don't they? I've reflected. Same in cats. Right, so that's Crocs. Get at night or in low light. The pigments. being bent in just the right way that it passes through your circular pupil into your eye, hitting your retina so your brain can receive the image and, well, you can see. In all that, the pupil plays the key role as the adjustable opening that controls the intensity of light allowed to enter your eye, just like the aperture on the camera. In humans, our pupils dilate to allow more light in and contract to allow less light in. But not all eyes in the animal kingdom are created equal, nor are all pupils. When we think about different eyes, we have to remember that eyes didn't develop on land. Nothing did. The first eyes of the first living things were underwater, where light moves differently and moisture is built into the environment. As different species developed in and out of water, pupil shapes have gotten weird. Or at least, weird when we're used to looking at our own circular pupils. Obviously... Sorry, I just want to bring that back, because she said something which supports one of the other things which I say about how Earth expansion, the Earth used to be a third of the size, 300 million years ago started expanding, but the same amount of ocean water has been present. So, 300 million years ago, the entire world was underwater. Kingdom are created equal, nor are all peoples. When we think about different eyes, we have to remember that eyes didn't develop on land. Nothing did. The first eyes of the first living... Nothing developed on land. Things were underwater, where light moves differently and moisture is built into the environment. As different species developed in and out of water, pupil shapes have gotten weird. Or at least, weird when we're used to looking at our own circular pupils. Obviously, they're totally normal and natural. The one most of us are familiar with is the vertical slit pupil, which, interestingly enough, has developed in a variety of species independently, including canines, felines, some snakes, geckos, crocodiles, and some birds. That's okay, I didn't know it was that many. I news geckos, crocodiles, and cats. And I did wonder about snakes, because I thought they were called snake eyes. And some canines. It'd be interesting to see which canine has uh, slitted pupils and birds. It's a pretty wide variety of animals. What they all have in common is that they are nocturnal predators who don't stand too high off the ground. One benefit is that slit pupils can contract and dilate more than circular ones. Think of a cat who is awake and running around in full daylight and in the middle of the night. Cats can see far better than we can in these two extreme light environments. Yeah, but those felines have round pupils, the ones you just showed us there. What about the hyena? Hyena eye. I didn't check hyenas. Uh. 
Oh. Is that a slitted pupil? Is that a hyena? It's not even a hyena. Whoa, look at that one. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> that looks so fake. Is that real? There's a camel, there's a type of camel that has eyes that go that way. Uh, come on. Hyena eyes. Close up. Well, it looks like they are slitted. Can't fucking tell they're so fucking dark. Okay, I'll accept they're slitted. Oh, um, Alright, let's go back to this. Some more recent research suggests that slit pupils also help. But leopards and cheetahs around. I've got pictures of that. Prump dimp dum. Have I still got them? Bugger. No, they're not here. Sorry. On the other computer. Right. Pardon me. Help predatory animals see color in different light conditions, leaving a large amount of the retina open to receive wavelengths of light that translate to different colors. A vertical pupil also affects the depth of the image that the eye can see, as well as increased horizontal movement and sharp focus, something predators like cats need more than humans. Vertical pupils are also less noticeable than round ones when a predator is staring you down. But there's another pupil shape that's also developed independently among a number of species, and that's the horizontal slit. Even toad ungulates, as well as all equines, mongooses, some frogs, toads, and octopi have horizontal pupils. That's a pretty interesting mix that might not seem to have a lot of obvious commonalities to explain their shared pupil shape. But they are all predators with eyes on the sides of their head with a lateral pupil. They all get an extremely wide field of view, sometimes nearing a full 360 degrees. So those vertical and horizontal slits are the major pupils. But there are some stranger ones out there particularly lurking in the water or in species that have to see both underwater and in the air. Some species of gecko have pinhole pupils, pupils that, when fully contracted, become just four tiny dots vertically in the eye that can help engage distance. Dolphins have pupils that look like the letter U when fully contracted. The cuttlefish has a super neat looking W-shaped pupil that is actually a break in the retina. They can look forwards and backwards at the same time and see in polarized light, cutting out the glare that can make it impossible for humans to see. In the scheme of eye things, our eyes are sort of the most basic, but they serve us very well. But there's an intense variety of pupils out there that really speaks to the amazing variety of species on our planet. Great video. I dig the cuttlefish pupil and find the horizontal okay. one a little bit terrifying. What's your favorite pupil? I am. Let us know in the comments below, or you can tell us on Twitter at Dean News, and I'm on there as well as AST Vintage Space. Thank you. So, canine, uh, canine vertical slit pupil. Is that like a fox? <clears throat> yeah, dogs are mainly around, aren't they? Anyway, so that was the little bit of research I wanted to do. And I was kind of thinking, well look, if there are children of the evil one, if the vertical slitted pupil was the sign, and, uh, and we brought them very close to us, watching us, what do geckos do? Just see that. What do geckos do? I think my son once wanted a gecko. <laughs> Images. They can lick their eyes, that's it. Some of them can walk on water. They're all about. Ah, can't be evil, really. That's just stupid. Okay, so I think that uh, 
brings us to the end of uh, this our video so um, I will say goodbye Rebel for Jesus. 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 Rebel for Jesus.